Today, our economy is considered one of the top in the world. We have well-maintained public facilities, quality education, efficient public transportation, organized highway systems, and many other infrastructures that help make our lives much more convenient. However, on the other side of the world, many regions in Africa, Middle East, and other small countries are suffering wars, poverty, and political chaos. These underdeveloped countries usually have a poor economy, and people there are not able to live up to the basic living standard. Due to low employment, they don't have much income to support themselves, and because of that, their everyday consumptions become very low. Without consumers' demands for goods. Markets begin to shrink, and companies have to cut salary in order to gain profit. Eventually, these countries all fall into a cycle of poverty. How are we going to help these countries to boost their economy? Are we going to pour in tons of money, or does the economy recover by itself? Economists start to find possible solutions to this problem, and one of the theories was born: the Big Push theory. Big push theory was proposed by an economist named Paul Rosenstein Rodin. His main research is on underdeveloped countries' economy. From 1940s to 1950s, he proposed the big push theory. The big push theory is intended to help underdeveloped countries to start a healthy cycle for economy. It states that big investment is the only way to push the economic development. Any small investment will just become a wastage of resources. This theory is made out of three indivisibilities, or minimum scale of something. And remember, this minimum scale is large because big push theory is all about big amount. Rosenstein Rodin stated that the big push theory is based on the indivisibility of production function, the indivisibility of demand, and the indivisibility of saving. In order to make the economy better. We first have to make the products cheaper. The idea behind the indivisibility of production function is that a large minimum scale of production is needed to bring the cost down. The big push theory suggests that such high productivity can be achieved by investing heavily on social overhead capital. This is just a fancy term referring to all the public facilities and infrastructures built by the government. When people have a nicer living environment, they'll be more productive in terms of work. Eventually, as stated by the indivisibility of production function, the high productivity will increase the production and significantly bring the price down. Let's look at the idea with the product supply graph. As you can see, this line is the traditional supply function. The number of labor is proportional to the production, and This is the supply line suggested by the indivisibility of production function. The advantage of this line is that with the same amount of labor, production is higher when producing at a high amount. The second component of big push theory is the indivisibility of demand. In underdeveloped countries, people do not have much buying power. In order to fulfill the market demand, government needs to invest heavily on setting up. Multiple industries simultaneously. Why not just invest in one industry? Let's look at his famous shoe factory example. If you only invest in the shoe factory, then everyone is coming to work for the shoe factory for a higher income. Once they have more money, they don't just spend it on buying tons of shoes because they only have two legs. Hopefully, so what do they do? They must want to buy all their stuff. But there is no one working for the clothes and car factory, so it will result with high demand and low supply, which causes the price of other products to rise. So, if the government sets up this industry simultaneously, then workers from each factory will fulfill the market demand for the other two industries. Then the price of all the products will be at a reasonable amount or cheaper. This is what the indivisibility of demand is all about. The third component of big push theory is the indivisibility of saving. This is simply saying that with a higher amount of saving, people are able to consume more products, which is a good sign for a healthy economy. In order to achieve this goal, people need to save more when their income increases. 
the only time government can invest heavily on industries is when people have more saving at home. It's like a self-generated money source, so the government doesn't need to borrow money from other countries. In the visibility of production function, in the visibility of demand, and in the visibility of saving are the three main components of Rosenstein Rodin's big push theory that intends to help underdeveloped countries. However, there are several criticisms toward this theory, including that the government will gain too much power and we don't even know whether the government will make the right decisions of investment or not. Also, this theory is not even supported by any historical evidence. Therefore, the Big Push theory is too idealistic to work in real situations.